right, our third type of tonic is called an ellipse. And this little animated GIF shows you how to draw an ellipse. So you start with two points. If you were doing this with string, you would need two push pins, and you would attach those push pins to cardboard or something of that nature. And then you would make the string taut and use your pencil to draw uh, in an oval shape. And that will create an ellipse. Those two points are called your foci. And they help determine the shape of that ellipse. So the ellipse is a set of all points x, y in a plane, the sum of whose distances from two distinct fixed points called foci is constant. So foci is the plural of focus. d1 plus d2 will always be the same number, and it will be the length of your major axis. So an ellipse has a center. It has what's called a major axis and a minor axis. The vertices are always on the major axis. Our book does not call them minor vertices, but at point at times we'll talk about them just so we know what we're, we're talking about. Okay, we have two vertices, but when we're wanting to make our shape, we'll need to know how far up and how far down from the center to go. And I might refer tho to those as minor minor vertices. Okay. So I looked at this already and saw that when we moved that, we were getting that same constant number. So here are the two standard equations for an ellipse. Just as we had horizontal and vertical parabolas, we can also have horizontal, a horizontal or a vertical ellipse. It looks similar to the equation of a circle, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. However, now we have an a squared and a b squared in the denominator. And so a has to be larger than b, and b is bigger than 0. So what we do is we kind of move or think about where that larger one is. And that's going to be your a. Don't worry about whether you're taking k plus or minus a with our h, or whether it's h plus or minus a with our k. We're going to think about this intuitively as to what's happening with these. But these are the formal definitions of the, of the equations. OK? So let's see how this works. First of all, we need to talk about how we get um, our foci. And we notice that the foci have a c in there. Okay. The way I remember this is this looks a lot like Pythagorean theorem, but suddenly we have a minus sign in the middle. Okay. The reason for the minus is because we're adding the ellipse components, right? the x and the y components. So this is the opposite of this. When we talk about hyperbolas, it will be back to plus again because there will be a minus in between. Okay. So c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Locate that on your sheet. Put a star beside it or color it in so it's nice and bold and bright so you don't remember, don't forget. You can remember it. So the length of your major axis is always twice a. So we'll find the larger denominator, take the square root of it, and that's the distance from the center to the vertex. And we'll double that to get the length of the major axis. And we'll double b when we want to know the length of the minor axis. To find the foci, we're going to use the c squared equals a squared minus b squared. And the foci are always on the major axis. Okay. So then there's one more term to talk about, and that's eccentricity. The eccentricity is kind of how eccentric is that ellipse. So it measures the ovalness of your ellipse. The E, which is found by taking C divided by A, if E is closer to 0, it's more circular. If it's closer to 1, it's more oval. A couple blanks to fill in on your sheet. All right, questions so far? 
closer to zero, more circular, closer to one, more oval. All right, so for those of you who love completing the square, today's your day. Okay, best day ever. We need to figure out what the center, the radius, the vertices, foci, and the eccentricity of this conic bar. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, when did we talk about radius with, with ellipses? And we didn't. So some of these problems in here will be disguised. They'll be circles, basically. And so if you are working with a, an ellipse, you won't be telling me what the radius is. But if you happen to run across a circle in your problems, then you will tell me what the radius is. Does that make sense? All right. So we have x squared plus 4y squared plus 6x minus 8y plus 9 equals 0. And we're supposed to put this into the standard form for an ellipse and then decide what is the center of it. What's the radius if it has one? What are the vertices and so on? So what's our first step going to be? Break it up. Let's get the x's with the x's, the y's with the y's. So if we have x squared plus 6x and then a 4y squared and a minus 8y, and then let's move this 9 to the other side. Once positive, it will be negative on the right. So far, so good? What's the next step? Complete the square. Okay. So we ask ourselves, what would we have to add to x squared plus 6x? And then add 9. Why is it 9? Yep, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. If we add 9 to the left side, we have to add it to the right. Okay, now, slight problem, the next part doesn't look like what we've been working with. It has a leading coefficient, doesn't it? Absolutely, but we have to first factor it out, right? So we have to take that, yep, 4y squared minus 2y, right? We have to take the 4 out so that we can not have a leading coefficient anymore. Now, what would we add to that? 1. So one, half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. But what did we actually add to it? 4. So we have to make sure that we're adding 4 to both sides. Distribute that 4 in with the 1. Okay. So now we have two perfect square trinomials. The first one is x plus 3. Square root of the first, same sign, square root of the last. Okay. The second one has a 4 out in front. And what is its perfect square trinomial as a binomial squared? 1 minus 1 quantity squared. All right. Negative 9 plus 9 plus 4 gets us 4. So we're just about there. In order to have an ellipse, the equation, the standard form of an ellipse is the equation, we need to divide everybody by 4 because we have to have a 1 on the right hand side. We divide everybody by 4, every single term, we get x plus 3 squared plus, if you want to write y minus 1 squared over 1, sorry, over, this is going to be over 1, the x plus 3 squared is over 4. And 4 over 4 is 1. If you want to hold that place with a 1, feel free. Nothing wrong with that. So what is the center of our ellipse? Negative 3, 1 will be your center of your ellipse. So we start by plotting that. 3 back, 1 up. You want to put a C for center, feel free. So now we have a form, x minus h quantity squared over something squared plus y minus k quantity squared over something else squared equals 1. Which ones are a? The, four, the a is 4 squared, right? So 4 squared is a. That means a is 2. What's b? 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Okay? So, 
Is this a vertical or a horizontal ellipse? The a squared is bigger, right? So it's a horizontal ellipse. We're going to move two to the right, two to the left from our center, and have a major axis of the length of four. We'll move one up, one down, for a minor axis of two. And then we're going to try to draw something that remotely looks like an ellipse. Okay, I saw your circles. They're no better than mine. So we'll see how they turn out. Relatively football shaped. Okay, so we've got our basic shape. We know the vertices now are negative 1, 1 and negative 5, 1. So the only things left to find are the foci and the eccentricity of the conic. Because this is in a circle, so it will not have a radius. So how do we find the foci? Very good. We have to find c. c squared is a squared minus b squared. Ellipses have a plus in between, so the c squared formula will have a minus in between. So we'll take 2 squared and subtract 1 squared. So C will be square root of 3. So when you're finding your foci, we're going square root of 3 over. That's 1 point something, right? Not quite 2. Square root of 4 would be 2. So we're going 1 point. Anybody know what square root of 3 is off the top of their head? Okay. More than one and a half, okay? And then more than one and a half the other way. So here are our two foci. When you want to write those, we know we moved right and left, right? So it's the negative three that was plus the square root of three, and the negative three that was minus the square root of three. So we'll call the foci negative three plus or minus the square root of three, comma, one, one up. So when they're in radical form, when you have a foci or a vertex that's a square root, you can write it combined like that. doesn't hurt a thing. But if they are nice numbers that are easy to write, we'll just write the vertices like we did here. All right, questions on this first problem? Eccentricity, thank you for remembering. Okay, so eccentricity, we have to remember, is equal to c over a. So our c in this case was the square root of 3. a was 2. So square root of 3 over 2 is our eccentricity. So far so good? All right. Next example. Now we have 9x squared plus 4y squared plus 36x minus 8y plus 4 is equal to 0. So what do we do? Yeah, get the 4 over, get the x's together, y's together, 9x squared minus 8, oh, plus 6, 36x. Leave some space, and we're going to have a plus 4y squared minus 8y. Negative 4 when it goes to the other side. Next step. Yep, take the 9 out. So x squared plus 4x. y squared minus 2y. All right, so what's the perfect, what's the number we're adding to make that a perfect, the first one, a perfect square trinomial? Half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4. But we didn't truly add 4, we added 
36. So we have to add 36 to the opposite side. What are we adding to our second parentheses to make a perfect square triangle? One, but we didn't truly add one, we added four, so we need to add four again. Now the left, the first term is a perfect square trinomial that can be written as a binomial squared. It is what squared? Square root of the first, sine of the middle, square root of the last. The second one is also a perfect square trinomial. What is it? Yep, y minus 1, perfect, the square root of the first, same sign, square root of the last. And when we add a negative 4, I forgot my negative sign, plus 36, plus 4, we get So last step to get it into the form we need, divide everybody by 36. So 9 divided by 36 is so x plus 2 quantity squared over 4. 4 divided by 36. Y minus 1 squared over 9 is equal to our good old 1. So what's the center of our vertex? Negative 2, positive 1. Horizontal or vertical? Vertical, why? Yep, the a squared is now under the y minus 1. Okay, so how much am I going up and down from my center? Almost. A is, a is 3, right? And B is 2. So we're going up 3 and down 3. And then right and left how many? 2. And then we try to draw something that resembles an ellipse. Almost did a good job. So our major axis is six long, our minor axis is four. The foci are always on the which axis? Major axis. Okay. So we have to find the foci. So first, let's write our vertices down. So these, again, are our, on our major axis. Our, our one of them is negative 2, negative 2, and the other is negative 2, positive 4. And since our foci have to go vertically, right, we're going to have negative 2 and then negative 2, or um, sorry, 1 plus or minus something, right? So let's figure out what C is. C squared is always what with the ellipse? A squared minus B squared. So C squared is 9 minus 4. So C has to be the square root of 5. So for our foci, they will be the square root of 5 up and down from our center. Square root of 5 is a little bit more than 2. And so we're at negative 2, 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. We have no radius because this is not a circle, it's an ellipse. And the eccentricity is found by taking C over A. C 
she was square root of 5. So square root of 5 over 3. What questions do you have on this one? All right, ellipses aren't bad, right? Just a lot of completing the square. All right, assignment. And then the back side, we'll take notes on tomorrow. We'll spend a little bit more time on them.